Hello everybody and welcome back to the Healthy Orange Movie Reviews. I'm Bennett Campbell Ferguson. Patrick Bella. Max Myers. Oh, Mo Chanet. And we are here today to talk about the movies we saw this past May, starting with X-Men Days of Future Past. So before we get started, I want to pose a question to you guys. This, uh, I, I came out of this movie, I, I went to the midnight premiere, being the nerd that I am, <laughs> And I, uh, I, I, I had, I had two like immediate reactions. One was I was happy because it was, because it was good. I mean, it's yes. it's a good movie. It's it's entertaining. It's uh, it's nicely directed, satisfying. But at the same time, I also had a feeling that it could have been a little bolder because I'm like it was. It's the first X Men movie Brian Singer's done since X Two, and like you know, every time I watch X2, I am just like practically sobbing in a puddle of tears. And I was, and this, this felt... But in a good way. In a yes. very good way, yes. Just, just to clarify. So, so did anyone else like have that reaction? Like, did anyone else feel like this was like a good but kind of a tepid safe movie? It's, there were a lot of flaws that come to mind when, after I saw the movie. Like, I... Flaws as far as movie... Movie like oh, uh, this, like any movie, this would be a flaw or a flaw in regard to history, I guess, both. or the comics. Uh, well, factoring well, in the comics, a little bit of both. Um, for instance, I will give this movie a four out of four perfect review. If anyone can tell me when and how Kitty Pride learned to shoot people back in time, <laughs> that uh, that was a little when did that happen? Yeah. Clearly in that dead zone between <laughs> X three and now. All right, how? Which is like a ten-year gap. I was apparently. wondering. Because that's, that's the crux of the movie is on something that makes no sense it's and it's true. never explained. That she just happens to have a power. That she just has this power that doesn't fit in with her old powers, which she still has. Uh, I, 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 how, I, how did they send her back in the original comic? I, Professor X did it because he has telepathic powers and, that were super and he's strong. A boss. Oh. Yeah. Because yeah, because he has magic Patrick Stewart powers. <laughs> he himself, not Professor X. Whatever he I, used against the Romulans. <laughs> in that one episode, of Next Generation. <laughs> yeah. One episode. But, so uh, Kitty Pryde was basically the briefcase, like an in Inception. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yes. Well, Inception. I did think of Inception. You know, watching this. Yeah. You know? Inception, I'll roll with, because it's like, Whatever. there's a dream machine. Okay, go. And it's like, yeah, that's the rules of your sci-fi. See, that's what, I, yeah, that's one thing I like about Inception. Inception, like, you know, you have this suitcase. We don't really know how it works. We don't need to know how it works. It's like, you, we just, you just roll from it. It's kind of mysterious. Yeah, but you don't need to know how Kitty Pryde's powers work. They explain that. Right. You need to know when those became a thing. And that's another thing I'm wondering if, I mean, the, if they should spend a bit more time in the future. Because it's not that long before mm -hmm. she sends him back. I mean, did anyone else feel like we were, like, missing a little of that good apocalyptic darkness and uh, character development in that period? No, no, I don't. I, I was fine with it. I, had, I don't know. I, I feel so. They had some really good action in the future. It's true. They had yeah. Blink. They were thinking with portals. I loved Blink. <laughs> the, some of those shots were really cool. They were. Yeah, like, yeah. and I like that there were some points where they slowed down when the Sentinels were attacking. You see one shoot through a portal, end up hitting another one. They slowed down. You're like, oh, okay. I mean, otherwise it's just a bunch of action that happens in my film. Just been a Transformers movie. Yeah. I mean, it was awesome, and I thought she was really cool. She and, was. She was I a mean, great character. And, and there was a lot of really great stuff. Although, I don't know. Much like all the other X Men movies, there was a lot of characters right there. They don't really explain who they are, other than my name's Bishop. I'm gonna shoot something at you, and it's gonna power this gun, and then I'm gonna shoot them. Like, all right, we're just gonna go with it. Like, no explanation. I mean, it's, well, that's that's part of the. The, the hitch of the X-Men is that We don't have enough time to explain who these people are and why they work. Oh, no, See, you I'm, do in the comics. But, you, but here's the thing. They, uh, the X-Men were sort of... They were different than a lot of Marvel heroes in that you didn't have to bend over backwards to explain how they got their powers. Like, Thor is like... He was a guy who found a magic stick that gave him the <laughs> powers of the Norse god. Or Iron Man. He was a dude who, who was a scientist that let him build the robot suit. With the X-Men, you can come up with any background, 
any backstory and just be like, they have good breeding, they have powers, go. Right. So writers basically have carte blanche to, do, to just make up whatever character they want to. Is that why Brian Singer does what he does in those movies? <laughs> Maybe. What does he do? I don't know. I feel like sometimes he just takes the characters and he goes, I'm just going to do what I want. I just, I don't know. That's what I just feel like sometimes he just, does, like Lady Deathstrike in X2. Great movie, love the character, but then you find out, oh, that's like one of Wolverine's greatest enemies, and it's just like, she's here, and now she's drowning but, at but the bottom of the Here's the thing of that, like, story. I, does. Um, I'm like, I was okay with that, because, you know, it's like, it's, that fight scene was so beautiful. It was done. cool. I mean, like, you, oh, yeah. you, you know, there's a, a lot of tragedy and ambiguity, you know, she's this villain, but you feel for her when she dies. I mean, I think it's like, you know, there's always that one thing you want to see, but... Like, for what we did get, it was pretty spectacular. <laughs> Patrick, how did you, you come into the X-Men world? Were you a fan of the comics, or did you start with the movies? Or? Oh, I was a fan of the comics uh, a long time ago when I was younger, uh, but I haven't really kept up with it so much. So my reintroduction to the X-Men uh, started with uh, Bob Sanger's first movie, so X-1, X-2, yeah. X-3, and the other movies. Uh, I, yeah, like you, I didn't really notice a lot of continuity errors, and a lot of these content uh, errors, you know, between the comic book and the films, are not a huge issue for me because I understand films are a business. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, well, they're a different media. Yeah.